Father, we thank you for this day. We are grateful, Lord, for the opportunity to be in your house today. And we do ask, Father, that you would bless our services this morning. We're grateful for the opportunity to be able to, to sing, lift up our voice in song, and to be able to come and hear your word preached. And we pray, Father, that our hearts would be prepared for the, the preaching and teaching of your word. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. You, we, you can be seated today. And uh, we are, again, so thankful that you're here. We're excited about... Uh, our local church and the things that we have going on, and we want to remind you about some of those things. We want to remind you that next Sunday is our homecoming Sunday. We are excited, looking forward to that. Jimmy Nichols will be here preaching for us, and uh, we just believe we're going to have a great day. We want to remind you that our schedule is a little bit different on homecoming Sunday. Uh, we're going to begin our services at 10 a.m. next week. And so there's not a building with the Bible hour or children's Sunday school hour next week. But rather, we start our services, everybody here in the auditorium, at 10 a.m. And uh, uh, one big service. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. We will uh, have our super church uh, uh, as we do each uh, a week. Uh, just at our normal time. Sometimes we change that, uh, but uh, because we don't have our vans and buses uh, fully operational yet, we're not going to uh, do anything different with Super Church, so we'll have that during a normal time uh, during the service, so you can uh, be looking forward to that as well. But uh, 10 o'clock, so don't forget about that. Uh, we want, want you to uh, enjoy a great service. We'll have some special music, and Jimmy uh, will preach for us. We're looking forward to it. Then after the service, we'll have our annual dinner that we have. And uh, again, we're doing it differently. We're, the church will provide uh, our meal for us next Sunday. We'll have some volunteers who are going to help us serve the meal so that we can do everything very responsibly and, and uh, do well with that so that we can enjoy that time together. We want you, we want you to come and be a part of that. And what we've done uh, this year, what we're asking, instead of bringing food in like we do normally, we're just asking you to give a donation towards the meal uh, for your family to help us cover the, the, the expense of uh, bringing the meal in. And so uh, we want to encourage you to do that. So while it might look slightly different than uh, past years, we're going to have a great homecoming service. We want to encourage you to come be a part of it. So I hope you'll be praying for that this week. I hope that uh, you've been inviting and looking towards people you could uh, seek to bring with you next Sunday during the service. And uh, I know for me, I have one person in particular this week that I want to uh, uh, want to just ask about the services, and I'm praying the Lord will give me opportunity. So I hope uh, that's uh, something that's on your mind as well. We look forward to homecoming service that uh, you can invite somebody to come so they can hear the truth of God's Word and uh, spend some time fellowshipping together with uh, uh, Christians. We are looking forward to that. And we also want to remind you about our event on October the 20th, our Trump or Treat event that we're going to do in lieu of our annual Hallelujah Festival. Looking forward to that. Today, after the service, after the service this morning, we're going to have a quick meeting. Uh, for any of those who are interested in that, we're just going to meet over here uh, for just a few moments after the service. And uh, we want to let you know about uh, just some of the more of the details about that event. If you have any questions, it'll be a great time uh, to, do, uh, to ask those. And so we're about a month away from that. We want to do the very best we can. So we're going to have cars decorated uh, throughout uh, the front of the property where kids can come and walk through and get candy and uh, see some of the people from our church, but we want to share with you in the meeting how we're going to do that. Uh, so again, be responsible and do it in a way that will uh, be beneficial for our community and be uh, just a, an encouraging thing for uh, those children in particular. So we want to encourage you. We need as many families as possible from our church to help us with that because obviously the more vehicles that are decorated, the, the better it will be. If you think about how we festival, all the booths that we have around uh, the gym, when we do that each year, as we're going to do that with our cars. So the more cars we have, obviously, uh, the, the greater that event will be. And so, But I'll let you know, know more about what that will look like in the meeting uh, right after the service today. So I hope you'll stay and uh, be a part of that. We want to remind our ladies that our next Ladies Bible Fellowship is tomorrow at 6.30 in the Ministry Center. And so we want to encourage all of our ladies, teenage ladies, uh, and adult ladies to come. Be a part of the Lady Bible Fellowship. So that'll be an encouragement to you, and you'll enjoy uh, that time together. I do want to let you know as well that uh, we still need some uh, families to help us with refreshments on Wednesdays for our Pastor Pirate and our uh, teen ministries. And uh, I know somebody mentioned to me this week that because we are not passing the clipboard around that you have for, that somebody had forgotten to sign up, and uh, it just slipped their mind. And that's easy, particularly because we always have passed uh, the, the, the sign-up sheets around in the past, so I want to encourage you, if you want to help with that, uh, not to forget to come. I just have it laying up here in the front row to come and look and see if there's a 
time this coming Wednesday for both groups uh, to help us uh, with those. And I think there are several weeks that are taken after that, and then maybe the last two weeks uh, of the month uh, in October we need some help. So if if you want to help, I'm asking you just to remember to come and look at that after the service. So uh, and I'm like that. If it doesn't, if it's not right in front of me, I forget about it. And so uh, I want to encourage you, if you'd like to help uh, be a part of the refreshments, uh, come and sign up, look at the list, and, and see if you can be a help uh, with those things. All right. Well, we're glad you're here. We want to sing another song uh, today as we uh, are spending some time thinking about how good our Lord is. So we're going to sing a song uh, called At Calvary. So I hope you'll sing along with us, follow along on the strings, and uh, I sing uh, to the Lord. about next Sunday being our homecoming Sunday, uh, we want to make it a great day. We need a great day. We need to make it that way. And uh, even though we've got all these things going on around us, uh, it's still a wonderful day that we've set apart on our calendar. Looking forward to it. Our missionary evangelist, Jimmy Nichols, we support Brother Jimmy. He's one of our missionaries. Uh, we support him every month. And uh, uh, you can read his latest prayer letters up here on our mission board. Uh, Jimmy was with the Rock of Ages Prison Ministries for years, and uh, he went into prisons and, uh, and places like that all across the country, uh, down south, into some of the uh, toughest places you can go uh, in there, uh, and just taking the gospel from man to man, person to person, cell to cell. God saw uh, uh, the Lord, Jimmy saw the Lord do some great things while he was with the Rock of Ages Prison Ministries. But now he's continuing to do many of those same things in local jails, uh, in a lot of orphanages, in different places. He ministers to young people. Uh, Jimmy was raised in an orphanage, an orphan home. It's a great story about how God worked in his life and uh, saved him, called him to preach, and is still using him in the very place he grew up as a child. 
uh, in, that, in that orphanage. He goes back there every week and shares the gospel with those boys and girls. So a great, great preacher, and he'll be here with his wife next Sunday morning. We start at 10 a.m. Everybody meets right in here, boys and girls and everybody. Now, we will have our nursery for our toddlers and infants, uh, but everybody will be here, and then uh, we're going to have some special singing to start off the service and some things that uh, we have planned, and then as we transition into the service time, our children will uh, have their own service, and then uh, we want you to be sure to plan on staying for the meal. Now, it's not going to be a carry-in dinner like we normally do. We're going to purchase some great food for the, for the, for the dinner. So uh, we're going to have some fried chicken, and we're going to have some special things for the children, and we're going to have some sides, and it's all going to be uh, professionally prepared foods. Uh, we're going to have a few of our people who are going to be masked up and gloved up, and they're going to be providing that for you. It's going to be safer than going to McDonald's, I promise you that, and better food. And so, uh, so just plan on staying and eating. Uh, but in order for us to do that with the church providing the food and refreshments, we need your help with that. So uh, we had some people give me some uh, some of their uh, money on the way to the Sunday school this morning, building with the Bible Hour. After here's our family's donation for that. So don't forget to do that. Get an offering envelope out of the pew right now. Remind yourself, write offering on it uh, or, or write homecoming on it. And then just drop it in one of these offering plates, either at the back door or up here, just like you would your regular tithe or offering. And that way your family uh, will be able to uh, just enjoy that great meal together with us after the service next Sunday. No evening services on Homecoming Sunday, uh, but we want to make that morning a great day. You can invite people to that service. We ought to be inviting people to Homecoming any and every service we have. Uh, but invite them. We'll spread them out. We've got plenty of room here. We'll fill this section up. Uh, we've got seating back there. We'll put people up here if we have to, uh, but people will be able to spread out and uh, be in a responsible way here. Uh, but you uh, you be inviting people to come. Tell them about uh, the preacher we're going to have and uh, invite them to be your guest on Homecoming Sunday. And uh, we're really looking forward to that. And that'll be next Sunday morning now. Uh, and uh, that's going to be the last Sunday in the month of September. And then we're going to be moving into the month of October. And uh, moving right on ahead, so you be sure to be here. It's great to have Jordan with us uh, today, and uh, his friend, and uh, he's been deployed, been overseas, but back now, and we're thankful for him and his service for our country. And uh, he's settling back into uh, his job there. Uh, but uh, you, you pray for him, and uh, we're thankful he's able to come and be here today and be with us. And uh, so it's a great day. We're looking forward to it. And uh, our folks are going to sing for us here today.
treat, and it's something that we want to do just to have an outreach into our community. And uh, we're going to print up some uh, special tracks that we provide for families. Uh, me and you get those tracks and give them out in your own homes and neighborhoods to the trick or treaters. <coughs> we'll have them for that night as well. You can give, you can give them out as, as the boys and girls come by. And uh, we're going to just uh, try to make that as great a night as we can. It will be different from what we normally do. Uh, but we'll do a great job. We need your family to help that out. We'd both like to have our parking lot filled with places the boys and girls can come by. And uh, you can uh, do a lot or a little, uh, maybe a little bit of decorating on the, the back of your car and open up the trunk or open up the hatch. Uh, we live in a hatchback world today. Just about the only everybody's got a hatch or a bed. Uh, let's put that tailgate down. And uh, you can just stay right there by your vehicle. Uh, for you who are uh, participating in the trunk or treat, you don't have to move around, walk around. You're just going to stay put. And everybody will walk around and come to you. And uh, so, uh, so we think about that. They've got some great ideas and some pictures of uh, others that have done it before. And uh, we're going to try to scatter in amongst all of that some other just special things we can do for uh, the families and boys and girls that come. And uh, so uh, we need your help. It'll be a great night for us. Lord willing, we'll have a good weather, uh, good weather for that evening. And, uh, so, so that'll be coming up in October, and uh, we're looking forward to that. And uh, that'll be a great, a great evening for us. And uh, we're, we need your help with it. Well, take your Bible this morning, and we want you to open it to the book of Philippians. Philippians in the New Testament, chapter four. <coughs> we're going to read the first four verses from there. And I preached from this passage of scripture uh, very recently, but I want to go back to here and look at another portion of it. Uh, we mentioned October is coming up soon, and we want to encourage everybody here to be in the Building with the Bible Hour classes for the month of October. Uh, in November, we have a, an election. It's election year. And, uh, we get to vote for a president. We get to vote for uh, many uh, national uh, and uh, state uh, officials, and uh, we want to exercise our right to be able to do that, have a voice. Uh, but you know, as in all things, we as God's people ought to be biblical people above all things, scriptural people. And so whatever we do, we want to do it on the foundation of God's word. And as we uh, approach uh, that day, and we step in uh, to uh, that, well, we, now they just make you walk up to that box, don't they? You just stand there and uh, both, but uh, but uh, we want to do it in a biblical way, do it in a scriptural way. And so the month of October, we're going to be looking at uh, this subject. It's scriptural issues that matter. It's scriptural issues that matter. We're going to hear a lot about issues. We're going to hear uh, the issues about foreign policy, and about economics, and about health care, and about jobs, and about uh, all these uh, social issues, you know, that are going to be uh, going to be uh, the the issues and the talking points. But for a child of God, it ought to be a biblical issue. It ought to be a scriptural issue. What what do they believe? What do they think? What are they going to do with this uh, with the, with the marriage and the family uh, home? What are they going to do with that? Where do they stand on that with the biblical home? You know, today, uh, we talked about it, uh, but this, uh, this group, the Black Lives Matter group, which is, which is not a group or an organization that we as God's people ought to have anything to do with. You can go on their website, and you can see very clearly what it is, their purposes and goals are, and they're using these events in our country as a means to try to move their agenda forward. Uh, but but uh, we can see very clearly that one of their statements is to do away with what they refer to as the nuclear family, the nuclear family. Now what that means is, is a traditional home where you have a mother and a father and their children, and their goal is to eliminate that. They're going to go in and push forward uh, the, uh, the LGBT agenda and move that forward everywhere they can. They want to destroy the, the biblical home, the family. I want to know about that. That's an issue that matters. Uh, God gave 
the Holman family as his first great institution to this to, to human to, to humans. And, and it's a bedrock foundation. It's an issue that matters. What are they going to do about uh, killing unborn children? The blood of millions of unborn babies who've been killed in our country legally and supported by the government for years. Uh, what are they, where do they stand on that? I, I want to know about these issues because it doesn't, the economy doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter. Health care doesn't matter to me. Uh, these issues aren't important to me. Why? Because I have a God who's promised to meet my every need. I have a God who said, if I put first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he'll supply every need that I have. These issues, the world is rising and falling on mean nothing to a true born again believer. But where do we stand on the issues that really matter? That's what, that's what we need to look at as we move forward to that voting day. And so we're going to spend the month of October looking at those issues. And, uh, and so I hope you'll be a part of the Building with the Bible Hour. I believe it's one of the most important hours that we can have uh, throughout the whole week. So you, you, be, you be there 930 on Sunday mornings. If you've got your Bible open to Philippians chapter 4, I want to preach this morning on this subject. Is your name, is your name in the book of life? Is your name in the book of life? I believe there's a literal book, a real book that's the book of life. And we're going to read about it in God's Word today. But I want you to ask yourself, is your name there? If you say yes, then why would you make that statement? Why would you say that? And uh, how can we know and be sure that it is? And so we're going to look about uh, this uh, subject. Notice in uh, the Bible, Philippians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Eudeus and I beseech Sintich that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. I'll stop right there, but you mark that phrase, the book of life, whose names are in the book of life. You see it in verse number three. Lord, we've read your word today, and we're glad we could be together. We're thankful that we can come, and Lord, we can uh, we can join our families together. Uh, Lord, standing uh, on scriptural uh, truths, uh, singing songs, Lord, that magnify who you are and what you've done for us. Feel songs, God, that go beyond just a feeling uh, to a, a strong biblical foundation of faith for us. Uh, and Lord, we're thankful that uh, our children can receive instruction in the great and important truths of God's Word, which are the most important things that they'll ever learn in life. And so, Lord, we're praying that, uh, Lord, today now, as we gather together as families, that, Lord, uh, you'll speak to our hearts, and, God, that we'll have ears to hear you, that, God, we will... Uh, we will be responsive people to the truths of God's Word. That, Lord, our lives, our families and homes will be ordered up and built upon the foundation we, found, we find in God's Word. That it will be, God, the blueprint that we build by. That, God, it will be the ultimate authority of our lives. And that all we are and do, we do according to your Word. And Lord, we pray that, God, you would strengthen our faith, uh, Lord, to stand for you in these days that we live in. And, uh, Lord, we're just asking you now today to minister to every heart and life that's here. And, Lord, we're praying maybe someone come to church today. But, Lord, they've never come to Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. God, they may be religious and maybe grew up in some type of church or faith. Maybe did things and practiced things that they felt like, God, that you accepted and were pleased with. But, God, when it comes to the matter of whether or not our names are in the book of life, Lord, I pray today that you would uh, just speak to every heart about these things. And that, God, you'd rebuke the devil and our flesh and feelings. And, Lord, these fears that we might have about responding to you. And that, Lord, each and every one of us, God, would have a very clear understanding. And that we would know, God, today uh, whether or not our names are in the book of life. And, God, we would respond to you and be sure 
But God, uh, we know that uh, with all of our heart and lives. So you, you be glorified today, Lord Jesus. We want to lift you up. We want your word, God, to be acknowledged as the word of God. And that, God, it is above our words, thoughts, philosophies, and ideals. And it's forever settled in the heavens. Truth, uh, God, in this world that we live in. And may we respond to it. And we ask it all today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And amen. Amen. Well, we did recently preach from this passage of Scripture, possibly last Sunday night. I, I really I'm unsure. It's been a while. Uh, a lot's been going on, you know. And, uh, but, uh, but from this passage of Scripture, I preached from verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I preached on why we can rejoice. Why we can. And we looked at this. And, and we see this clear command that's the choice that every born again believer must make. To rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord again and again, he said, to rejoice. Wherever we are in life, whatever we're facing, we have this command to rejoice in the Lord. We found that the true joy that's available for a child of God to rejoice in always is centered in our relationship with Jesus Christ. It's that relationship in which we find our joy. Rejoice in the Lord, Paul said, always. In the Lord. Uh, we looked at Luke chapter 10, and, and uh, we saw a group of disciples that had been returning uh, to Jesus Christ. Uh, they, they were giving an update on the recent outreach that they had been involved in. And verse 17 of Luke chapter 10, the Bible said, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. So these disciples who had been out two by two, uh, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, they came back and they were just uh, boy excited. They were uh, rejoicing uh, because they found that the Spirit of God was upon them so that any time they ran into a devil, and you know this world is filled with devils. Listen, there's one devil that we call Satan. The Bible calls him Lucifer. And uh, he is a fallen angel who rebelled against the Lord Jesus Christ. And he led one-third of all the angels in rebellion against the Lord. But, but they were overcome. They were defeated. And they were banished from heaven. They were, they were sentenced to an eternity in a place called hell. That's what hell was made for, the devil and his angels. Someday they're going to spend eternity in the lake of fire. They're not going to be there because that's where they live. They're going to be there because that's where they're incarcerated in, in punishment forever and forever. And there's a devil, and he's your enemy today. But there are lots of devils. That's all those fallen angels that follow him. And they're alive and in the world, many of them today. And they're going about the work of the devil to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And these these, these disciples, they ran into some of these devils. And some of these devils opposed them. Some of these devils possessed lost people. And they were, uh, they were uh, in opposition to them. And the Spirit of God made it such that the devils were subject to those disciples. So that the devils could, uh, could be commanded to leave or to, uh, to, 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 to move out of the lives of those they possess. To, uh, to be overcome and rebuked where they oppose uh, the gospel and the work of God. And so they came back filled with joy about all these things. They had seen a devil be opposed. And they rejoiced. But notice the Lord Jesus said to them, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He said, you're rejoicing because some little devil was subject to the Spirit of God through your life. He said, I want you to know I defeated Satan and saw him cast out of heaven like lightning falling to the earth. I saw, the Lord saw that. The Lord and his angel Michael and the armies of God defeated them. Defeated them. And the Lord told them, he said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And he said to them in verse 20, Notwithstanding, 
In this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Your names are written. We see the Lord correct and instruct the disciples about what they ought to be rejoicing in. He said, listen, not that devils obey your command. You know, these, these disciples, they may have had the power and authority to cast out a devil out of a life. We read about that all throughout the gospel records, don't we? A father bringing their son to the Lord Jesus and he had been possessed with a devil or some other situation where there's a demonic presence in the life of someone. That's a very real thing. Say, Pastor, how can we understand and explain some of the things that are going on in our world today? Because there's a real devil that uses men whose nature is sinful and vile and corrupt to do unthinkable things. That's why we see the things we have going on in the world today. And the Lord Jesus said, listen, don't rejoice if you have the power and authority to cast out some devil out of someone's life. Rejoice in the fact you had a gospel to share with that person, that they might be able to be saved and their names were written in the book of life. Because that's going to matter a million years from now. And whether or not you cast out this devil or had authority over him, or whether you were able to withstand the sting of that scorpion in the moment, that's not going to matter a million years from now. But their names written in heaven, that's going to make an eternity. That's what you're rejoicing in. That their names, your name, are written in the book of life. The book of life in heaven. We see this book spoken of in verse 3 of our text whose names are in the book of life. Now, it's interesting to me, and I read through this this week in preparation for this message and just putting these things together in order, but, you know, here we are today. We're living in this world. We're living on this side of eternity. On the other side of this world and life in this world, there's heaven and hell. And they're real, and they're there. And at this moment, Right now, there are people in heaven and there are people in hell. We're living our life on this side of eternity. But I want I, I wanted I wanted to ask you, I want you to consider that right now, right now, is your name already in heaven? Is it already there? Because if it's written in the book of life, it's already there. I don't know how that works. I don't know who can see that book. But I know today if the Lord Jesus walked over to that book, I'm here today. God's, God's not finished my course. It could finish today. He could come today. I don't know those things. But I do know this, that though I'm here in this world, on this side of the world, my name is already written in the book of life. Right now in heaven, if the Lord looked at that book, he would find my name. Is your name already in the book of life? Is it already there? Is it written down by the grace of God through faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ? Our names are written in the book of life. By faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. We know that the Lord Jesus came into the world God in human form. We know that he came into this world and lived a sinless life, something that you and I cannot do. He was God. And as God, he came and lived perfectly. We know that he went to the cross. And we know on the cross, God made him to become our sin. The Lord Jesus never knew sin. He never sinned. He, he, he obeyed the laws of God. Mind and deed and motive and thought and action. He did always those things that pleased the Father. He never sinned. And, and he went to the cross and God made him to be my sin. All the sin that I've ever committed in my life up till today and for the rest of my life. All that I ever will commit. He took it all. And he made his son become my sin. And not just mine, but yours. And on the cross, Jesus Christ gave his life to pay my sin debt. 
the wages of sin is death. And I owe that debt of death. And he paid that debt, spiritual debt. He paid it for me. He died physically. And we know that uh, on the third day, he rose from the dead. And he has power, power over death, hell, and the grave. And because he's risen and living today, God has given us this testimony that the death of Christ was enough to pay my sin debt. And now he's a living Savior. And now any man, woman, boy, and girl will confess their sin and receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior can have eternal life, forgiveness of sin. It's not because of who you are. It's not because of what you do or your motives or intentions or what you promised God or how, try, how, how uh, good you try to be. It's not in any of those things. It's in the fact that God in the form of Christ died for me. And he was the only, he was the only acceptable sacrifice. He was the only one who could pay my sin debt. And now because he lives, I can live and have eternal life. I can have my sin debt forgiven that separates me from God. I can go to heaven someday. And I know today that my name is written in the book of life. I know my name is there. Is your name there? You know, there's, there's a day that that's going to be the one thing above all things that matters the most. Is our name is written down there. It's the one thing we ought to be sure of. It's the one thing we can rejoice always in, no matter what's going on in the world or what we're experiencing in this lifetime. But not everyone's name will be there, and not everyone's name is there right now. Right now, your name is either there or it is not. You've either received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. There was a time and a place where you trusted Him. You agreed with God. By the Word of God, by the Spirit of God's work in your life, you realize, yes, I am a sinner. I have sinned. I've sinned. It's my nature to do it. And it separates me from God. And there's a time and a place in your life when you, when you look to God the Father who loved you so much He gave His Son, and you said, Father, forgive me because my sin sent Your Son to the cross. Forgive me for my part in that. And I'm receiving the gift of eternal I'm trusting that Your Son was Your gift to me. Forgive me. Give me eternal life. By the grace of God, I receive that today. There's a time and a place where that's been real in your life. Your spiritual birth is just as real as your physical birth. And there's so many people trusting so many things. They're hoping for this, that, and the other. But there's got to be a time and place when you see Jesus Christ. Your name, then, is written down. We're all born into this world sinners owing a debt of sin that we can't pay, separated from God forever, without our name in the book of life. And the only way it gets in that book is when we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. After the Lord Jesus returns, it is unlikely that anybody that has heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and has rejected that gospel and never been saved, it is unlikely that you will ever be able to have your name written in the book of life after the Lord Jesus comes again. It's unlikely. We say that based on what the Scripture teaches us. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8 said, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Do you realize there's going to be a day when this world is going to worship the devil? He's going to sin. God's going to send delusions. And the, and the devil is going to deceive the world. They're going to worship him. They're going to worship him. Many of them are now, and they're not aware of it. They don't realize they bought into this system the world is pushing that has power greater than this world behind it. He's the prince and the power of the air, the, the, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. We see this world of chaos. What's motivating that? Other people's goodwill? In most cases, no. It's a spirit of chaos. It's a spirit of disobedience that is coming from Satan himself. 
Many people already are, 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 are in on that and they're, they're worshiping him though they may not be aware of it. But a day after the Lord Jesus comes, there will not be one believer left in the world and the Spirit of God will be withdrawn from this world and this world is going to worship the devil. The Word of God says today, right now, let him hear. You that have an ear to hear, hear it today. Today is the day uh, that you should hear and respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ and have your names written down in the book of life. Revelation 21, verse 26, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Speaking about that heavenly city. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book. Life. Listen today, the only ones who are going to live in heaven are those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's the only ones. And, and you say, Pastor, you can't make that judgment. You can't say that. I'm not. Please, please understand. It is God who says that is. Their names in the Book of Life. They are the ones, no matter what someone may say, no matter what some may think. The names that are in the book of life. Is your name in the book of life? Is it in the book of life? You know, Paul came to the city of Philippi and the Lord led him to some women. Uh, these women that he met were religious women. They were sincere, but they were lost. They were lost. Our daughter, her name is Lydia. We chose that name because of what we read about this woman named Lydia in the scriptures. And uh, we first read about this woman named Lydia in the Bible in Acts chapter 16. The Bible says in Acts 16 verse 12, and from thence to Philippi, this is talking about Paul's journey, he came to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia and the colony. And we were in that build, or in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. Now this, this might seem like a very simple passage of Scripture, but it's very important. I've used this passage of Scripture as a soul winning passage of Scripture with many people, especially adult people. People maybe that come from other religions. Maybe people that grew up in faith and religions where they did not trust the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. If you asked them about God and they believed in God, they would say, yes, preacher, I believe in God. And they could tell me some things about God. They believe God created the heavens and the earth. And they believe, they believe that, that, uh, uh, that God was the Old Testament God of the people of Israel. And they believed in God. And they would call out to God just like these women did. But the problem was that they were missing something crucial in their life. Because Jesus said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so Paul shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with these women. And the Spirit of God opened up their hearts. And they realized that the only way they could know the true and living God that they thought they knew in worship was by receiving the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that day they trusted Christ and were saved. Paul led them to the Lord. These women were religious. They were sincere, but they were lost. They needed someone to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. And there are people like that all around us today. There are people that sit in churches like our church every week. And they're trusting, they know a God that they don't know because they don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And these people, they trusted the Lord. Paul led them and taught them about believers' baptism. Verse 15 said, when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, if ye judge me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. And one of the things that uh, so appealed to us about Lydia 
was the kind of woman that we know that she was from the scripture. She's a woman who, who was confused and lost, but received the gospel of Jesus Christ and was saved. She followed the Lord and believers baptism, but that wasn't enough. She said, listen, Paul, you need a place to meet. I've got a big place. The Bible said she was a seller of purple. That meant she was a, 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 a merchant woman. She, she was involved in very, very lucrative business because purple and scarlet fabrics were the most expensive that could be bought or sold in the day. They were the, they were the fabric of royalty. And so she was in a lucrative business. She was a wealthy woman of means and her family and maybe had a wonderful place and a large place. Maybe she had business and a, and a place where they could meet and begin to have church. And she invited Paul to begin to use their facilities. And she ministered to the man of God and moved the work of God forward and gave of everything she had so the gospel could be brought to the city of Philippi. That's why we chose to have a daughter who shared that because that's what we wanted for our daughter. Someone who would know the gospel of Jesus Christ, be saved, and give her life and all she was to further the gospel and help out and stand with the man of God. This is what this woman did. And Paul went on to love the people of Philippi. There became a church established there. And when he thinks of them, in Philippians 4, verse 1, he said, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for. This is how he thought about it. You're dearly, dearly beloved to me. I long to see you, to be with you again. He said, my joy and crown, my joy and crown, stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. In our text, in our text, we see what this church meant to Paul. Now, when we read this, verse number two, we find there are a couple women there who have a disagreement about something. I don't know what the disagreement was about. One's name was Judas, the other one's name was Sintich. They had a disagreement about something. I guarantee it was something minor. Probably, probably what kind of tan lotion the flavor of the scent was in the bathroom, you know. Uh, whatever it might have been, you know. It could have been anything, but it was nothing. And even though they may have thought it was the most important issue of contention, that could possibly have. I want you to understand that Paul has led the Spirit of God to remind them here that what made the difference was that their names were written down in heaven. That's what made the difference. And that many years from now, it wasn't going to matter whether it was rose petal or lemon uh, scent, uh, lotion that was in the bathroom. Or if someone got to do this first, or do that first, or get involved in this, or, or got to do that, or had their name on this group or that group. It wasn't going to matter in those years from now. But what did matter was their names were written down. Their names were written down. May the Lord help us to live our lives like we are on our way with our names written down to that place called heaven. Notice these things real quickly, and I'll, I'll be done. Notice number one uh, here, that, that we're, we're called to stand fast in the faith. Because our names are written down, we ought to stand fast in the faith. Verse 1, therefore, my brethren, but dearly beloved, long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord. Stand fast in the Lord. Because my name is written down, I want to stand fast in the faith. I want to stand fast in the faith. Someone said that we're not defined by the, by the trials that we face. We all face trials and tribulations. They're all different. And sometimes we can look at someone and we can say, well, they deserve that. You know, we think we know so much about it all. And we think we know so much about them. And we think their trial defines who they are. Well, they've got this horrible trial they're facing. They must have been unfaithful. They must have been, uh, been not sincere in this. They must have been doing something they shouldn't have done. And we can look at some trial people face, and we think we can define them by the trial they face. But we're not defined by the trials that we face. But what trials will do is they will reveal what kind of person we are in the trial. That's what they do. They reveal to you by the way we respond to them, by the way we respond 
We must stand fast in the faith. We must carry on, even in the face of trials. We must continue to move the work of God forward, living for eternity, because our names are written down there. We're living in a day and day where we've got to remind ourselves that now is when we've got to stand fast in the faith. We've got, we've got, uh, we've got a, a, a moment now in our lives that most of us will never face a moment like this in our lives again. You know, we're facing uh, elections. We're facing possibly the most drastic change in the direction of our country that it has ever experienced, ever experienced. I'm thankful for the last few years, at least, we've kind of been trying to hold on or go back to where we were. But if, if that changes in this next election, we're going to see things uh, that our America, it's not going to be our America anymore. It's not going to be the course for the change. We're living in a crucial moment. And we must realize as born-again believers that this, of all moments, is a moment where we have to stand fast in the faith. We, we have to stand fast. Uh, you know, if we've got to wear a mask, then let's wear a mask. But let's not let that mask keeping us, keep us from getting the work of God done. If we've got to social distance a little bit, then let's do it. But let's not let it bring us to a stop. Let's not let it get the work of God stopped from moving forward. And uh, whatever it has to do that we have to do today, then we'll have to do it in the day that we're living in. Uh, but we must stand fast. We must continue on in the Lord's work, living a Christ-like life, living like our names are written down in heaven. We've got we to stand fast. Knowing that this is a unique moment in time. And knowing that Right now, we might be able to reach people that we can't reach at any other time. Because, because of what's happening, God is working. God is shaking up the foundations of our country, this world. And we have that unique moment where by standing fast in the faith, in the Lord, His Word, knowing the presence of His Holy Spirit, knowing that God's hand is upon us, that He's providing for us, then we can stand fast in the faith and move God's work forward. We have to stand fast in the faith because our names are written down. And because our names are written down, we must have the same mind as the Lord. Have the same mind as the Lord. He said in verse 2, I beseech Eudeus and I beseech Sintich that they be of the same mind in the Lord. The same mind in the Lord. Now, as a local church is a body. That's one of the ways the Lord gives us the illustration of the church. And he, he gives us the illustration of the church like a body. The church is not the building or the property we're on. It's the people. And the people make up a living body. We're all part of the body. Your body has all kinds of different parts. And uh, some of them are big, some of them are little, some of them are bigger than they used to be, and all those kind of things. But, uh, but we're, we have all these parts. And every part, I believe, you would agree with me about, is important. Everyone's important. I don't know of any that you would necessarily want to do without. I'm reminded about that every morning I comb my hair. You know, there's another more line in the sink or on the countertop. Are all important. Everyone. You think about a church. The Lord Jesus is our head. He's our head. And we're each a part. Whether we're large or small. All equally are important. In the local church. Everyone. Everyone. Necessary. So that body can get its work done. So it can get done what. God's called it to do. He placed it where he placed it so it can do what, it, what he's placed it there to do. And you think about how can so many pieces, how can so many different pieces come together and accomplish anything for the glory of God? How, how can we do it? And some places it didn't get done. There's some places where the body parts, they just won't work together, will they? And, you know, uh, there's those divisions like there is in the, in, in the church in Philippi. And the work of God isn't getting done. 
then, then move forward. But how can it get done? Well, Paul tells him, he said, you need to have the same mind as the Lord. You need to have the Lord's mind. Every piece of that body has the Lord's mind. Uh, if we mention any subject, there's going to be a various uh, a number of views, and philosophies, and ideas about that subject. But when we mention one, and then we say, well, let's find out what God has to say about that, then all those many varying ones become one. And that one becomes unifying and becomes in, it becomes strengthening and becomes empowering. And, and that's the way God gets His work done. Because our names are written down in heaven, then we ought to have the mind of our Lord and Savior. The Bible's the best commentary on God's Word, so if we go back and see what the Bible says about the mind of the Lord, having the mind of the Lord, we go back to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Verse 5 said, but let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now each of us must share the mind of the Lord Jesus, because our names are written down. We ought to want to think like Jesus. We ought to want to live like he did. Each of us together doing that. I think about the Lord Jesus. I think about his mind of obedience. His mind of obedience. He humbled himself and became obedient to the will of God, even to death. Even unto death. The death of the cross. He was willing to even to do that. If that's what the Lord's will was for his life. If that was God's will for his life. He said, Lord, not my will, but thine. He was obedient. How many things are in the Word of God that we just can't get there? We know God's Word says it. We know the Bible says it, but we just can't get there. That matter of obedience. If we all just had the same mind about, about tithing and giving missions offerings and passing out gospel tracts and serving God, inviting people to Sunday school and church. We all just had the same mind about that. Just think of how different things might be. Obedient. Surrender. He surrendered everything to the Father. The use of the Father. The love that he had for the church. He loved it, gave himself for it. If we all just shared the mind of Christ about our church, how we love it what it means to us and our family. Nothing in the world do to be what your local church does. So many times we can kind of just take it or leave it or get it just a little bit here and there. The Lord loves the church. We have that mind about it. His singleness of purpose, how he kept every bit of the law of God, uh, how he was crucified and risen again. You know what? We ought to have that mind. He said, if any man come after me, let him take up his cross daily and follow me. The Lord Jesus has a life for you. He has a new life for you. He's given you eternal life, but he wants you to live a new life every single day. A life where you're not under the subjection of the world. Where you're not under the subjection of your flesh. Where you're not tempted and overcome by the devil. He wants to give you victory over those things every single day. But we have to have his mind about things order to have those victories. To glorify God, that's ultimately what he desired to do, wasn't it? I glorified you, he said in John chapter 17. Can we say that? We can if we have in mind the mind of Christ. Each of us must share the mind of the Lord because our names are written down. Stand fast. Have the same mind, Lord, where each only sinners saved by grace are. Sinners saved by grace, but our names are written down. May the Lord help us live that way, standing fast, having his mind. And then number three, serving together. Paul, Paul gives them this third thought here. Serving the Lord together. What a wonderful thought. Some of my greatest experiences in life come from serving the Lord together with others. Memorable things. 
things we've seen God do. Serving the Lord together. Serving the Lord together. Some people, their whole Christian experience, I, I see it so much. They get saved or they get right with God. They come to church, but they never get in. You know the difference in coming to church and getting in? When you get in, you're in. And it doesn't matter what sister so-and-so across the aisle says or does. Not going to run you out. Not going to knock you out. Not going to shake you out. You're going to stay because you're in. And you're in not because of somebody else. You're in because your name's written down. You're in because of what the Lord did for you. And it's not that you just want to come and get something. You want to come and give something because your names are written down. What's the difference in being in church or coming to church and getting in? And there's a lot of people who never get in. Don't be like that. Get in. Get in. Because your names are written down. He said in verse 3, I entreat the also true yoke fell and help those women which labored with me in the gospel with Clement also and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. There's such great words in that verse of scripture. I like that word yoke fellow. He said true yoke fellow. True yoke fellow. Idea of a yoke meaning two animals. Shoulder to shoulder with a yoke across them, and they're locked in, and they're taking every step together, and they're pulling the weight, and they're getting it done. True yoke fellow. True yoke fellow. That's a wonderful thought. Helping those, he said, help those which labor with me. Paul remembers that. I can remember everywhere I've ever been, serving God, the people who labor with me. Or the people who labored against me. Or the people who just sat back and watched and criticized but wouldn't do anything. And Paul said, you are dearly beloved to me, you who labored with me. Why did they do that? Because their names were written down. Their names were written down. True yoke fellow, those who labored with me in the gospel, fellow laborers, fellow laborers. whose names are in the book of life. Paul said, it means something to have our names written down. The Lord Jesus said it's the only thing, really, that we ought to rejoice in always. Our names are written down. Stand fast. We've got to stand fast because our names are written down. But we need to have the mind of the Lord because our names are written down in serving together, serving together, laboring in the gospel because our names are written down. Is your name written in the book of life? Is it there? It's a wonderful thing, isn't it, to know I'm in this world. I don't know how much longer I'll be here. We all have an appointment, don't we? There are no accidents. If you're a Bible-believing person, there are no accidents. We use that term to describe some tragic thing, some unexpected thing. But there are none. God, God has an appointment. I have an appointment. Hebrews 9, 20 says, It's appointed unto man once to die. And if it's God's will that I meet that appointment before he comes again, then there ain't anything in heaven and earth going to keep me from that appointment. You know, I know sometimes we, we think this. Maybe, maybe you're getting ready to go on a trip and go outside and you've got a flat tire. We think, well, maybe, Lord, that's, so that I won't be in such and such a place at such and such a time on that journey. He kept me from something. And maybe the Lord did. But you know what he's doing? He's just keeping us on schedule. Isn't he? But when we make that appointment, there ain't anything going to stop. I don't know how long that is. I don't know how long it will be. And we all have that point. It is a wonderful thing to know that while we're in this world, we also, our name is in heaven. Our name is real. It's written in that book. And it's going to always be there. And it can't be taken out. There are many whose names are not there. But, but by the grace of God, if you're alive today, if you're breathing, 
planet Earth, you have the opportunity to put your needs there. Your needs can be put there to by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Someday, some moment, Paul said, him that has ears, let him hear. Let him hear right now. Lord, I'm sorry. You had to send your son to suffer and die for me. He did that for me. He gave his life for me. And I'm going to ask you to forgive me for that. I'm going to receive that gift you gave me. I'm not going to let me give it anything. I'm going to receive it. By faith, I believe you gave your son for me so that if I trusted in him, I'll have eternal life. Has that moment happened in your life? <coughs> Has your name been written down? Just don't let, don't let the world, don't let your own flesh or what your fear about what others may say or think about you keep you from having your name written down. It's the most important thing. And because our names are written down, God our impact our life. We have been standing for the Lord, having his mind, not mine, but his. Serving together as we wait for the Lord to come again. We're going to stand in a moment. We're going to sing a song. That song's an invitation. It's a time for an invitation uh, to invite you to say yes to God. I can promise you, I'll never regret saying yes to the Lord. Never regret. If God spoke to your heart today about, about your name being written down, if you know it is not, and you know today you, you've never trusted Jesus Christ to save you, maybe you were like Lydia, you believe there's a God. You can tell me some things about it. Maybe you've been religious. Maybe you've been sincere. Maybe you've gone to a church. Maybe you've participated in some of these things that you felt like were pleasing to God. I want you to know that there's nothing that will please God. Nothing can please Him in the matter of our salvation. Our name's being written down except the blood of His Son applied to your sin death by faith in His finished work. That's the only thing. The only thing. If you know that this has never been true in your life, don't wait. Today's the day. If any of the day we live in, we can see today how drastically things change from day to day. Today's that day. Be saved today. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Have your name written down. And if you know the Lord is your Savior, be sure you're standing fast. Have his mind serving. Serve the Lord. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we ask in Jesus' name. Lord, just have your way in our hearts. We believe the Bible is your word. God, we've simply read the Bible today and preached what you have in the Bible. We've not tried to tell these people what we think about it or our opinion or our idea. We simply shared the scripture. You said to preach the word. And so, Lord, we've done that today. By the Spirit of God, we pray you will speak to every heart. God, may each of us know that someday we'll be accountable for every word we've heard from God's word. Whether we respond to it, yes or no. And so Lord, today we're praying that every one of us will respond. God, we that know you as our Savior, we that know our names are written down. God, may we respond to you today. May we understand and know that today's a day to stand fast. It's not a day to shut things down. It's not a day to to stop serving you and living for you and reaching the lost and giving and investing in the work of God, it's time to do it more than ever. And so, Lord, however we got to do it, God, may we do it. May we stand fast in the faith. May we, God, uh, build on the foundation of scriptural eternal truth. Lord, may uh, our homes and marriages and families and parenting our children and the priorities of our life and living life this world, God, uh, may we find that the joy in it all is our relationship with you. Our names are written down. Our names are written down. Lord, we're praying that, God, we respond. May we, may we respond. May we just need to come and say, Lord, help me to stand fast. Lord, I, I want to have your mind. Give me your mind. Lord, help me to serve you. Show me what I can do. Whatever the needs are, God, may we each respond to you. Maybe somebody's here today and they don't know you as their personal Savior. Their names are not written down. If they died today, God, they would not go to heaven. If you return today, they would not hear their name called. Come up, hither. Come up, hither. Lord, we're praying today 
that Lord, they would see that today is the day. God, you've given us this day. You put breath in our bodies. You've given us this moment to hear your word of truth. And God, we need to respond to that moment that you've given us by your grace. So may every heart in life do today what they'll be glad they did and they can hear your word.